Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Zesta Herbal Soap Skincare and Lifestyle. Today, I would like us to talk about cyclic acid in cold process soap. I'll be making this video outside because inside the house is too noisy. I have small children and there's no how I'll make a video without you hearing some background noise or one disturbance or the other so that's why i decided to come outside and make this video today so i'll be talking about citric acid in cold process soup this is a question i usually get from some of my students especially when they are trying to make a hard soap or they are trying to make an exfoliating soap they talk about adding some of these organic acids into their cold process soap now we know that cold soap process soap is not surfactant based. It is what we call a true soap. Okay. So at times some of these true soaps, it's not everything you can put inside them. A normal cold process soap has an alkaline pH of about eight to ten on the pH scale. Okay, which is more of alkaline, which is way off from the pH of a normal skin. Meanwhile, this acid this citric acid is on the acidic side okay this citric acid is usually gotten from plants so it's plant-based it's also biodegradable it's good for our skin and healthy and and doesn't persist in the environment so that's what we mean by it is biodegradable some people add this citric acid to their soap with the hope that since it is acidic, it will raise up the pH of the soap so that it will be more softer, more skin-loving, instead of the pH to be high, around 8, 9, 10, the pH will now become lower to around maybe 6, 7, you understand? But for some of us that have been making soap, we know that when, if for you to get through soap, when the pH of the soap passes that alkalinity, you might not get the properties that you want in your soap. Even if it is black soap that you're making, let's say you're promixing black soap, or you want to add natural herbs to black soap, or you want to enrich your black soap and add oils to it. By the time you put too much oils, too much shea butter, too much herbs, too much mede mede in the soap, after some time the soap will just sit down like that, goop. It will not be foamy. It will not have the cleansing properties that you would like that a true soap will have. So in the same way also with cold process soap. At times when you raise up that pH too much, you will not get good soap. I remember in my early days of soap making, you know I like anything herbal, anything natural. Ah, I got enough lemon juice. Put enough lemon juice in my lye water. I made soap. That soap did not saponify you. The soap did not saponify. So when you put in your citric acid too much in your soap, it will actually affect the saponification of your soap. Because what is your lie? Your lie is sodium hydroxide. Is it not so? Now, from my basic chemistry, at least I was a, I was a science student. We did chemistry. Even in the university level, we did chemistry. I read microbiology, I read medical lab, so we do some little, little chemistry, even though chemistry is not one of my best subjects. I know that when you mix your sodium hydroxide with your citric acid, you get sodium citrate because of the reaction. When you mix your citric acid with your potassium hydroxide, for those that are making soft soap, you get potassium, you get potassium citrate, okay? So what happens when you put in too much citric acid in your cold process soap is that the citric acid reacts with some of the sodium hydroxide with, with your lye. Mm? 
it now will it now make some of the oils not react with your lye. What happens? It will increase the super fat level of your soap. Let's say you've already made that soap before and you've calculated your super fat and you added your super fat. Now with the citric acid, your amount of super fat will increase. You find that, that such soap will be, soaps will be soft. They will not harden well. Or even if they harden, they will not harden on time. They will have some undesirable properties you will not like. They will not larger well. Do you understand? So there is a need to know the amount of citric acid you'll be adding to your soap. Okay? Now let me explain this increasing of super fat. What happens in soap making? For those, for people that have been my students, they will understand. Before we make soap, remember I told you people, I do my calculations manually. Hmm? I do my calculations manually and I, we do our calculations in such a way that the amount of lye we use is enough for the oils that you use so that you don't have extra lye. Extra lye will end up peeling hands. It will, not, it will end up irritating the skin and spoiling clothes. And also if there's excess oils, it will end up making the soap too, too uh, I can't say too moisturizing. It will give you the right property you want for your soap and especially if you're making laundry soap. You are not interested in super fat in laundry soap is it not so so when you're making true soap when you are making soap you want you calculate it in such a way that the amount of caustic soda in the soap will be enough to react with the oils and we all know that these oils have different properties just that we human beings we are all human beings but we have different characteristics the way you behave with master a is different from the way you behave with master b so also in soap making the way palm oil will react to lye is different from the way palm kernel oil will react to lye so there's a need to calculate your caustic soda appropriately depending on the oils you're using now when you put in this too much citric acid assuming you've done your calculation right you're now putting this too much citric acid the citric acid will end up reacting with the lye, thereby leaving extra oils that will not be able to react with the lye to form your soap. So that is what I mean by it will cause saponification problems. It will increase the super fat of your soap. Okay. So, so how do we usually add this citric acid to soap? There are different ways of adding your citric acid to soap to your soap. You could decide to calculate this. You could decide to put in your citric acid in your lye water and then make your soap with it. Then you could decide also to add your citric acid after trace, either with your hot process or with your cold process. And mind you, this citric acid is also used in liquid soap. As you all know, most of the time we use it in our liquid soap, both for washing and for baiting. Isn't also we use it. So these are the ways you could add it in your lye water and you could also add it after trace in, hot pro, in cold process soap or after your soap has already, is already cooked completely in hot process soap. These are different ways of adding your citric acid. You dissolve it in water and add. But even at that, it will still react with the lye. Both in the cold process, both in the hot process and both in whether you use it in your lye water. It will still end up reacting with the lye. Okay, so how do you add, what is the right amount of citric acid to put into your soap? Now, what are the advantages of adding citric acid to your soap? For those of us that have been making soap for a long time, at times you make so much soap that you have some soap sitting around, isn't it so? Or maybe some people that sell soap and take it out and sometimes the soap, stay in, the soap stays long on the shelf. There are things we call dreaded orange spots. These look like rancidity and spoilage. They look like brown spots or not attractive spots on your soap. Citric acid prevents this from happening. Because citric acid, when added to your soap, especially if you're using hard water, ends up reacting also with the extra magnesium, with the extra calcium ions in your soap, thereby acting like a chelating agent, holding up to this ions such that your water will become desirable for the soap and also that will make your soap larger well it, it will make your soap foam well so apart from number one it makes soap foam well it gives stability to foam okay it works number two 
it prevents prevents dreaded orange spots from forming on your soap number three it acts as a chelating agent in your soap not directly in the soap but indirectly to the water you're using in your soap number four it is it it acts like an antioxidant not only to the soap and also it's healing to your skin number five it is like a preventive measure in soap against a lot of things like as i said soap chile and dreaded spots in your soap and again hardening and a hardness of water now another thing it does this is not, it reduces or stops conformation in your in your in your soap or in your in your ladder how will i explain scum have you ever baited in a bath not the one that you pour water over your body the one that you put water in a bath sit down inside and then bath inside at times when you bath you find out that the water the the soap is not really scrubbing well on your body it's in one kind as if you as you're scrubbing oil is depositing back on your skin that is what we call abu that's what we call the that is usually that usually happens in hard net hard water then this comb is the foam that forms instead of the foam to you know after bathing the foam look bubbly you see this foam looks sticky and it sticks to the edge of the bath or maybe to the edge of your tiles on the ground it looks scum i don't know how to describe this thing again scum it just forms scum so citric acid prevents scum formation okay it prevents scum formation so now how do you calculate your citric acid there are different ways people do it what some people do is that for each one part of citric acid they dissolve it with four parts of water that is if they are using 100 grams of citric acid they dissolve that 100 grams of citric acid in 400 grams of water then out of that 400 grams of water they use one percent of the total weight of their oils to add to the soap do you understand what i mean by that that is one part of your citric acid let's say for example you're using 100 grams you now dissolve it with 400 grams of water then you keep aside then when you're making your soap if your soap is 1000 mils or 1000 grams that is one liter you use one percent of your oils not of the total not your total recipe only your oils one percent of your oils that is what you will now fetch out of that your diluted citric acid that you've made and then add into your soap and what is one percent of 1000 mils that is about 10 that is about 10 years. That's how some people do it. Then another method, which me, I prefer. Because me, in anything, especially when it comes to cosmetics, I prefer something that you calculate. Something that you have a formula. Something that you're sure. I don't like estimation. Now, there's another method, which me, I prefer. And now, now, for the second method, you need to understand one thing. Hmm? For the second method, you need to understand one thing. For every 10 grams of citric acid you add to your soap, it reacts with 6 grams of sodium hydroxide. It reacts with 6 grams of sodium hydroxide. That is for hard bar soap. That's for hard bar soap. Then, for every 10 grams of citric acid you put in your soap, it reacts with... with 8 grams of potassium hydroxide that is for your soap soft soap now how would you know the amount of citric acid to add else okay that is for each 1000 grams for each 1000 mils or 1000 grams of oil you want to add two percent as of citric acid to it that is 20 grams of citric acid to each one liter of oils that is how it is done okay now assuming you are making laundry soap you have to calculate for this extra citric acid you've added you have to calculate the number of grams of sodium hydroxide that this citric acid have used up and then replace it back into your soap to react to the extra oils this calculation will do in our next video okay so now in summary what have we learned today we have learned that citric acid 
is good in soap because it prevents threaded orange spots. It acts as an antioxidant. It 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 acts as a pre preservative to your soap. It 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 forms potassium citrate or sodium citrate, which acts as a chelating agent in your soap. It reduces comb formation. It reacts with the metal ions in hard water, okay, so that your soap will end up laddering well. And what else did we learn? We learned that adding citric acid to your soap increases super fat of, of your soap. This super fat, if increased, especially in liquid soap, could cause cloudiness or separation in your liquid soap. This super fat, if increased too much in your soap, could make your soap not to ladder. It will make your soap not to foam. It will make your soap not to saponify well. So you need to know how to calculate your super fat. It's how to calculate your citric acid in your soap. And what are the two simple methods I gave you on calculating citric acid? You could decide to use one part citric acid to four parts of water. Then you now pick one percent of that your diluted solution and add to your soap. Or the second method, you could decide that for each 1,000 ml of oil, you're using 2% of citric acid in your soap. We'll continue with this lesson in our next video. If you watch this video up to this point and you've not subscribed, how you've not done me well, though, please subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe so that you'll be getting more tips and more lessons on cold process soap making. Thank you for watching my video. Ciao.